All right. Okay, so let's uh, begin our webinar today. So first of all, uh, good morning to everyone here. Uh, first, of, first of all, I want to say thank you to everyone here for spending the time with us uh, to join us and to uh, watch this webinar uh, for the next 30 minutes. So basically, uh, today's webinar is all about the basic of payroll in Malaysia. Now, I want to say thank you to everyone here basically for spending the time with us today. So my name is Hilmi. I am the uh, payroll system consultant here in Employment Hero. And uh, before we dive deeper into the topic, I want to say, I want to show you guys the agenda for today. So this is basically what we will be discuss. Uh, and the topic is, is all about payroll related. So I hope you guys are ready. And before I dive deeper into the topic, just want to make uh just want to uh tell you guys that we we have an allocated time uh for q and a after the session however if you if you guys want to i mean if you have any questions you guys you guys can feel free head over to the q and a section in the zoom taskbar so use that uh features to basically ask any questions uh we will try to answer all of your question uh one by one okay so that's that's one so our webinar will be exactly uh, around 30 to uh, 30 to 45 minutes so uh so basically uh at the end of the session we will give you uh, we will have an allocated time for for the q and a session all right so that is basically uh the agenda for today now <clears throat> Let us dive deeper into the basic of payroll in Malaysia and the agenda that we will start is basically how does payroll works in Malaysia. Okay, so payroll actually refers to the people who work at a company and the amount of money that entitled to be paid for the work they have completed. So basically, any type of employee uh, that works in the company, you basically have to uh, give salary to them and employee in the company basically in Malaysia governed by the Employment Act or what we normally say as EA. So this is not an EA form, yeah? so this is an Employment Act. So Employment Act, uh, if we, I mean, current current EA, uh, there's a two side of uh, employee that governed by EA. Uh, basically, an, an an employee who is below two thousand uh, monthly salary, and who is exceeded two thousand salary. Now, most of EA, if we if we if we open the EA and take a look at it, the employee uh the EA governed employee who has salary not exceeded two thousand ringgit. So we have an EA employee and we have non EA employee. So this is this 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 is what the EA govern. Now, I think you guys most probably know that in the uh, recent changes, we do have this Amendment Employment Act 2020, which increased the threshold of this uh, two thousand ringgit. So, current EA salary as employee that is below two thousand ringgit uh, will be governed by EA. Now, coming to the 1st of January, if let's say there's nothing happened uh, in our uh, government, so basically the threshold will be increased to 4,000 ringgit, right? So the payroll in Malaysia uh, usually governed by this EA forms, uh, sorry, EA uh, Employment Act 1955, okay? And based on the salary and payment, uh, EA also mentioned about the minimum wages, so as we know, the recent changes, uh, as of 1st of May 2022, the national minimum wage is uh, 1,500 ringgit nationwide. And the employer with less than five employees will receive a temporary exemption from changes until 31st December 2022. All right. So this is the, this is the current changes. And uh, the current EA working hours, the maximum working hours is 48 hours per week. 
All right. So, uh, and and if you uh, take a look at the amendment uh, of EA, this 48 hours basically has changed to 45 hours per week. Uh, so this this will coming uh, to an effect uh, after 1st of January, if let's say there's nothing happen. Yeah. Now the overtime here, basically uh, employee uh, are entitled for overtime, which regulated by the EA. So an employee who is covered by EA should be paid over time at 1.5 times their hourly rate pay. And we do have this uh, income tax rate, uh, monthly tax deduction, or we normally, uh, I mean, use it PCB, the potongan, potongan cukai bulanan. So this uh, tax filing, tax relief, and also the uh, monthly tax deduction. So this is one of the key things that we have to uh, consider when we do payroll in Malaysia. All right. So the whole the the overview of it is under the EA, and then uh, EA also govern a lot of things, uh, including the salary and payment, as what we have seen in the screen. Uh, and now, so next, if we if we take a look at the statutory contribution. So the, the the key factor, the key consideration that you have to uh, to make sure when you do your payroll, especially in Malaysia, is to look at the statutory contribution. So we do have these three main statutory contribution and one levy. So as you can see in the screen, we do have this uh, EPF. So what is EPF? EPF is a government fund which assists Malaysian employees uh, in saving for their retirement Right, and it is governed by the Employee Provident Act. And uh, basically citizen, permanent residents, and uh, has to, uh, I mean, you have to uh, cater for this EPF. And it is optional for foreign worker and rate of contribution deduction usually depends on the age, uh, annual salary and citizenship status, right? So we do have uh, SOXO, right? So, so you also have to, you, uh, you, have, you also have to Consider so, so when you do your pay run, it is the social security fund in Malaysia and it is meant mandatory for all employee, uh, Malaysian citizen, citizen, permanent residents or foreign worker. Although uh, for foreign worker and senior citizen, they will have, uh, they will use a different grade. Right, so this is this is one of the uh, contribution that you have to consider when you do your pay run and other thing is the HRDF. So HRDF is basically a levy which employer has to pay and based on the rate uh, uh, based on the rate uh, given by HRDF, you will you will have to pay either one percent or 0 0.5 per percent based on your employee uh, number of employee. So if you have more than 10, then you have to pay one percent. If you have below than 10, you have to pay 0.5% for the HRDF levy. So HRDF levy is basically only for uh, employer contribution. There will be no deduction from employee uh, salary. Okay. And the last for the contribution is basically the EIS. So EIS is designed to support employee for a period, uh, for a period of time if they lose their job. All right. So, uh, and work employee who actually lose the job can get up to six months uh, of support while they seek for a new employment. All right. Now, this will be the uh, contribution, the the mandatory contribution for employee and employer when you do your payroll. All right. So we take a look at just now. We have to take a look at the uh. EA, EA uh, 1955 and some of the amendment that the government will uh, change after 1st of January 2023 and also some of the contribution uh, that you guys have to consider when you do your pay run. And next, we take a look at the holidays and leave. So basically, this is <clears throat> basically this is the uh, one of the leave uh, among leave that gazetted uh, in the EA. So we do have a sick leave, annual leave, paternity, and, and based on EA, it's also mentioned that uh, for employee, they are entitled for tiered leave, which means based on years of services. So if you have employee 
who, uh, who is actually work more than two years, they are entitled for uh, more sick leave or more annual leave. So this is the tiered leave temp uh, tiered leave uh, uh, regulation set by the EA. Now, if as you can see from the screen, uh, it is based on years of service. Public holiday uh, also mentioned in the EA, and uh, it has eleven days of gazetted public holiday that you have to give to your uh, employee. Okay, so this is the holidays and leave. All right. Now, before we before we go to the next topic, which is pay sleep and pay record, I just want to make sure that you guys, uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask your question in the Q and A uh, during the during the webinar. We will try to answer your question one by one. Uh, although we do have an allocation time to, uh, for Q and A after the webinar session. Okay. All right. Now, uh, let's take a look at the uh, pay sleep and Pay, uh, pay record. Now, I would say uh, pay slip is the key, uh, key important uh, in the payroll when you do, when you process your pay run. So pay slip is basically a document that you will send to your employee and then your employee will use this pay slip to apply for a housing loan or maybe a a car loans, right? So that is that is a document that your employee will receive. And then basically also allow your employee to keep track of their earning, contribution, and also leave. So these are the key part of processing the payroll. And because of this uh, uh, pay slip, you, you have to make sure that all the information are available inside the pay slip. Because if you want, if if you want to let your employee to apply apply for loans, for example, you have to make sure that it is uh, legit, right? You have all the company names, all the uh, employees' EPF number, uh, all the wage amount, additional earning, all must have included in the uh, pay slip. So as you can see from the screen, this is one of uh, some of the checklist information which you have you should have in your pay slip. All right, so it's a lot, right? Now, uh, for payroll records, uh, in accordance with the Personal Data Protection Act 2010, it is important for us as a payroll admin or HR admin to keep a record of all payroll activities for at least six years. So using a proper filing system uh, like those which are available through payroll software, you can actually... Uh, I mean, this can help you easily retain and find this information. Okay. Now, next, uh, not only that, uh, when you do your payroll uh, for a yearly reporting, especially for the Form E, where you have to submit every year before 31st March for the previous financial year, uh, you, will, you will need to give a proper document to uh, LHD end and also you have to sub you have to send the EA form which include all the earnings all the additional earnings to your employee now all of this yearly reporting uh, you have to you have to give a proper document uh, uh, a correct information and it must be done in a proper manner so this is this is what are the uh, this these are the key important uh, reason why you have to make sure that you do uh, your payroll properly. Okay. Now, let's go to next slide, which is the common payroll mistake uh, and when can a non-compliance occur. So basically, as what we have uh, discussed from the previous slide, uh, with all the changes happening in Malaysia with the Amendment Employment Act 2020 that, that changed the, how the uh, employee will be governed in the EA, the minimum wages uh, and all the uh, ma maximum working hours, basically all changes in regulation in Malaysia that happened, it is, is, it is very difficult for us, especially for HR and payroll, I mean, to uh, keep up to, the, to these changes. And because of this, it is not surprising. Sometimes uh, we make mistakes during our payroll processing. 
So the gap in knowledge in in payroll knowledge usually happen because of all this reason. Now it is not surprising because of uh, we may have no prior experience to payroll. We may not have uh, know the, uh, the 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 law that is changed uh, uh, in in the in the current in the current year. And the solution for this usually, uh, if you are using payroll software with built-in compliance rule, this can help you through the learning process. In addition to streamlining your payroll operation for the long term, uh, and also you you. To avoid this, you can also seek expert advice from an employment law expert when you're setting up your business for employment. All right. So this is one of the one of the solutions that you can uh you, that you can make to avoid make any uh mistake when you do your payroll uh, processing. And next, uh if uh the inadequate record keeping. So basically, if you are using a traditional way of using payroll, uh, recording payroll, such as paper, or maybe you are using Excel. Now, because of the changes, because of the formula, the calculation is not automate, uh, it's not automated. You can make a uh, mistake calculating your EPF, calculating your so so, and even calculating your PCB, right? And and because of this. Uh, sometimes this uh, you can get penalty if you pay wrong PCB. You can, if you pay wrong EPF and also SOXO, and to avoid this, usually by using payroll system, uh, you can make the record keeping easy. And and there's a lot of payroll software out there that can helps you to manage payroll payslip and also the timesheet, and it make it simple for you and your team by introducing the digital solution uh, that actually a lot in the market right now all right next uh <clears throat> but <clears throat> even even though <laughs> even though we are using system right it doesn't it doesn't make that uh, if we are using system there will be no mistake that we can make yeah, it's not it's not like that right so usually even though you are using system right you can make mistake it's all depend on how you set up the system and and how the initial setting uh, that you do in the payroll system that can make your system whether it has uh, to reduce the mistake and to reduce the error. So the solution for this to avoid any to, to avoid making mistake is to uh, setting up your payroll system correctly and then you need a guider, you need uh, professional advice and investing your time, in setting up your payroll system okay so that is a uh, uh, common mistake that you can make uh, during during uh, processing your pay run and now what is basically a payroll software and how can it helps us uh, for payroll admin or hr admin in streamlining this process and make it easy for for us to do your pay slip or your pay run okay now uh, we in employment hero basically uh, our objective is to make employment easy and then we want to make sure that the process from the start of onboarding your employee uh, uh, onboarding your employee offboarding your employee calculate your piece uh, pay run uh, and then the statutory contribution we we really want to make it easy as it is and uh, with the few simple clicks we hope that it can help you process finalize and publish your payroll using the using the power of automation right and not only that we 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 make sure that the system is localized as much as possible we keep track on the uh, on the regulation, uh, we keep track on the uh, uh, changes of law, and not only that, we have also this timesheet, uh, time and attendance, where if let's say you use uh, rostering, uh, shift, uh, you want to clock in and clock out, so all of this is basically automated in the system, uh, and it is it make it easy for you to calculate your OT. Right, so if your employee clock in and clock out, it will be translated directly to your pay run. You can calculate your OT uh, 
uh, in a simple in, in, a, in a simple uh, click in a simple way and it's basically make the process a lot easier okay and then uh, next is staying up to date so as as i as we have discussed earlier on uh, with all the changes with all the uh, uh, current uh, law change in the in the in the payroll uh, in the especially in the payroll so we we make sure that our system is also up to date so that you don't have to worry about all of those changes okay now uh, this is a sneak peek of of Employment Hero. So basically you can see from the screen that uh, using our system, you can you can let your employee to clock in and clock out, uh, clock in your break, especially. Uh, they can also apply leave uh, from, from the apps uh, and submit claim. So it makes it make much more easier for your employee to do all of these things. And then you as a payroll admin just can manage it in the system and just approve it and once you approve once once you approve the the the, the application uh, it will then translate it to your payroll basically so this is this is one of uh, this is some of the features that we have in the employment hero All right we do have this uh, clock in and clock out we have real time reporting uh, we do have automated reporting uh, payslip uh, automated pay run and end of year report Okay, and 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 a lot more, right? So, this is the end of our webinar. I hope you find it beneficial, uh, to to you. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to drop down your question in the Q and A section. Uh, I will try to answer all of the question, uh, one by one. All right. All right, so we have a lot of questions in the in the uh, uh, Q and A section here. So let's start with uh, uh, Jun Saleh. Can the time and attendance integrate with other system? So our our time and attendance uh, are basically built in in the payroll system. So it is uh, usable for the uh, for the our only for the payroll itself. So it is not uh, it is not integrated with the other system. Hope that answers your questions. Uh, we have another question, which is attendance can be keep track through mobile apps. Uh, yes, yes. Basically, we do have a mobile apps, uh, and if your employee, if you enable the mobile apps in the system, okay, uh, and your employee downloaded the mobile apps, they can apply for leave. They can. Uh, do a submission claim and then they can clock in and clock out uh, and once they have clock in and clock out it will be uh, flows into the payroll in a digital in in a digital timesheet so it's not like what you have right now if let's say you're using traditional way of clock in where you're using punch card so just just imagine that and then that the the, the punch card will automatically goes to your payroll to calculate your ot rate uh usually so let's take a look at the other questions uh if an employee is scheduled to work on public holiday and the employee didn't turn up how it will reflect is it considered absent or will consider as public holiday so it's depend on how you set up in the system so if if you're if you are using clock in and clock out if they are not coming to work they will not uh, submit their timesheet so if they are not submitting their timesheet it will consider as a public holiday in the system uh, if they if they're submitting their timesheet it will consider as a working day so if you have a rule set in the system if they work in a public holiday system automatically calculate the uh, public rate public holiday rate hope that answer your question uh, <clears throat> yeah so we have a lot of questions here i will try to i will try to answer one by one now, if you have any question, just feel free to, to, to ask in the Q&A session, okay? <clears throat> okay. So, uh, let's take a look at, we have this, uh, another questions from Mr. Wee. 
the 98 days maternity leave also apply to a private sector. Uh, the EA form explicitly mentioned that it governed all employee irrespectively of wages with a certain exception whereby there's a certain law that uh, if you exceed 4,000, the EA will not govern the employee. But in high-level details, all employee, irrespectively of wages, will be governed under EA. Okay? So, yes, it also include the private sector. Now, we have another question uh, from Miss Cheryl. How about claims? Can we apply through mobile apps too? Uh, exactly, yes, you can apply from mobile apps. All right, so let's just keep your questions coming, guys. We will try to answer it one by one. Okay, so we do have this from Anonymous. Uh, do employer need to contribute EPF uh, employer if the foreign employee opts out for uh, opt out for employer employee? All right. So yes, yes, you can you can opt out to not pay EPF for foreign worker. Okay, so we do have another uh, questions for casual worker such as part timers with hourly rate payment. Are employer required to follow SORP rate as permanent employee? during OT on public holiday? Uh, the answer is yes. Okay, so, um, yeah. Uh, we have another question from Ms. Aniza. Do we have to transfer data timesheet into EH system and for the daily attendance should be manually at end Now, this is the, this is the great things about uh, system, whereby if you, if you uh, clock in using our mobile apps, it will be automatically translated to the payroll. So there's no need to uh, manual uh, manually add into the uh, to the payroll system. It will be automatically flows to your payroll. I hope that answers your questions. All right. So we still have uh, around five minutes for any questions. So if, if you don't have, uh, I mean, we will wait for another five minutes for Q&A. Uh, please keep your questions come in. Use the Q&A section to ask any questions. Uh, and I will try to answer your question one by one. Uh, Hema Priya, HRDF contribution is only for local or can we contribute for expat uh, foreign worker? Uh, uh, it is not compulsory to contribute for expat and foreign worker. I hope that answers your questions. Okay, we do have another question here. Normally, uh, from Anonymous, normally buyout of an employee from third party is managed and calculated manually. Is this subject to statutory in calculation and can be recorded in the system under the payroll and HR system? Uh, okay, so I, 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 I would assume that you have an employee from a third party, uh, which is from another company, and whether this is subjected to statutory in calculation, yes, and whether this can be recorded in the system under payroll or HR system, the answer is also yes. I hope that answers your questions. All right. Please keep your questions coming, guys. We will uh we will try to answer your question one by one. We have another two minutes uh to answer all of the questions. Yeah. Is your HR system under the same module as payroll? Uh in high level answer yes because the HR and payroll is integrated so it's basically talk to each other so whatever changes that you make in payroll it will be flows to your HR and if you onboarding uh, employee in HR system uh, the employee details will automatically flows to your 
payroll system as well. So in a in in a in a way, it is integrated and it is under the same uh, environment. So for the con, uh, we have another question from anonymous for the compulsory HRDF levy payment. Does the ten employee include contractual staffing? Uh, uh, the answer is yes. All right. Thank you for the questions, everyone. Okay, so we do have another question it's from Zuriati. Uh, is your HR system include disciplinary record? Uh, we do have. Uh, we do have a. Uh, in HR, we do have employee engagement. We do have uh, a one to one section, uh, and we have. Uh, uh, you can also create uh, a document. Sorry, you can you can also create uh, uh, customized details to to uh, to basically record and things in the system. So yes, you can have a disciplinary record, uh, and you can also record that in a one to one session and the employee engagement uh, details. Uh, does your system run on cloud? Yes. Yeah, we uh, Aniza bin Rahman. I hope there's another se uh, uh, session on EH payroll system and how it works in detail. Yep, you can you can uh, drop down your details, Miss Aniza. Uh, if you want to know more about uh, Employment Hero payrolls, uh, we will gladly uh, uh, contact you and give you a high level uh, uh, details in our Employment Hero payroll. Uh, and also, uh, just want to remind everyone here: we do uh, after the after we end our webinar session, there will be uh, a feedback that you guys can uh, answer. So please, uh, uh, it will be a, ben a great beneficial to us if you guys can uh, uh, give a feedback after the webinar session. Okay. Uh, we have uh, questions anonymous. Sorry. Is your HR system can customize uh, our own gazetted public holiday list and have two different holiday lists for two different working sites? In high level answer, yes. Uh, we have uh, built in the public holiday in the system, including different state. So if you have company uh, or branches in Johor, uh, you can customize the public holiday in Joho. And if you have another another company that is in Kuala Lumpur, uh, it also has a gazetted uh, built-in public holiday for Kuala Lumpur. So based on the location that you set up in the system, uh, employee that works in Joho will have their own public holiday. Employee that works in Kuala Lumpur, they will have their own public holiday. So this is already built in in the system and it is based on the uh, national public holiday uh, information. And also, if you have a, if you need to observe certain public holiday that is not uh, available in the gazetted public holiday, you can also create your own public holiday, if that's uh, if that's uh, understandable. I hope that answers your question, uh, uh, Mister. Sorry, anonymous. <laughs> Uh, may I know your support team based in Malaysia? Yes, yes, we we have we have a support team based in Malaysia. Correct. Uh, as as I mentioned earlier on, we try to make, uh, we try to make our system localized as much as possible. And it's not just the system; it's all uh, the environment behind it, the support team, the implementation team, uh, the develop the development is all local. Hope that answer your question. So, do we have another questions? Yep. <clears throat> Let's take a look at do uh we have another questions from Ariel. Do the do the payment include uh statutory contribution? Uh do the payment include statutory contribution? If if I read your question correctly, uh Miss Ariel, 
uh, for statutory, you will have to submit your forms to to each of government bodies. So when you do your submission in each government body for EPF, so so and EIS, the payment will be made respectively in the in the in the website. For employee, for employee salary, that will be based on the bank payment file, which you can also generate after you do your pay run. Hope that answers your question. All right. Did your company sell HRMS system? Yes, we do have HR, uh, HRMS system. Uh, okay. Yep. So uh, I will just leave, uh, I will just open for another minute for any Q&A. So if you have any questions, please feel free to drop down your question in the Q&A section, okay? Uh, anonymous, uh, how about training and performance module? Uh, yes, we do have, uh, as I mentioned early on, we do have one-to-one uh, one -one module. Uh, we have a performance module as well. Uh, okay, so anonymous, again, is your HR system built in public holiday list can remove certain holiday like website day and etc. Yes, basically it has built in, uh, as, as mentioned, the public holiday is built in in the system uh, based on different state and uh, based on national public holiday. However, if you wish to not observe some of the public holiday, Yes, you can remove it in the system, and when your when your employee work in 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 that uh, particular day, system will not consider as a public holiday because you have removed the uh, uh, public holiday in the system. Yes, I hope that answers your question. All right, it's already eleven forty, so. <clears throat> so if you have uh, any questions or details, just please. Uh, contact uh, that that is my email address and that will be the uh, employmenthero.com uh, hotline number uh, and i want to remind everyone here after the webinar session we will have uh, a feedback forms so it will be uh, beneficial for us if you guys can give a feedback after this webinar all right and uh, with that i want to say Thank you, everyone, for spending the time with us. Uh, hopefully, this will not be the last time that we meet each other virtually. So hopefully, the, hopefully we can. Uh, we 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 will. I mean, there's a feedback in the in the Q and A that you guys were requesting were re requesting for another session related to uh payroll system and HR system. Hopefully, we can have another session, and this will not be the last time that we we meet. Uh, thank you, everyone.